uh, 13 years into that, I got really restless, uh, really restless. And we, we were in a, a moment, we were in Clarksville, and it was a, a season for us of really just searching, you know, what, what do we do? How do we, how do we serve God? You know, what, does God require everything from me or just, you know, am I a, a part-time God server or just a, a full-time deal? You know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so we just, Sherry and I just said, okay, God, we're all in. We want to we wanna serve you with everything we have. And what does that mean? Say, okay, God, I'll serve you, but um, I, I'm... Our plans. Let me just lay out my plans first, and then you know, let's see if that kind of matches up you know, to, to what you guys. And I don't know if you guys here are, are tracking with me on this, but uh, sometimes we have our plans, and uh, sometimes we go, you know, God, you have to give me a good reason, you know, to do this other plan. Uh, you have to give me a good reason. You know, we we don't we don't follow God just just in blind obedience. Sometimes we just say. I need you need, you got to give me some reason to do this. Mm -hmm. and, and really, I don't know if that, that approach is really the, the best approach. Mm -hmm. um, Sherry and I, we were struggling because God, in his sense of humor, uh, actually I had taken a, uh, a position, I worked uh, down in Florida for, for FedEx. Uh, we, we were going, uh, Sherry had, was pregnant. We went to the, uh, the doctor's office. I was holding my second born in my arms, and the doctor came in after an ultrasound and said, we're having twins. Mm -hmm. I dropped the baby. Oh, my <laughs> God. Dropped him. No. I was crying. Dropped it. Yeah, he's like, I dropped him. He's like, I just, and all I could say for two days was, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I know that's a nice little, you know, little thing we say on, on text now, but I was like, so, you know, saying this. Oh my, and my wife was really concerned, she thought, because I just went into this emotional trauma. <laughs> like, like, okay, God, I'm ready to have three. I'm only going to have three children. And God said, no, you're going to have four at least. And uh, so. The baby's trauma the baby. What's that? It's the baby. The baby, the, oh yeah, everybody has. He's fine. He was actually, what, two, three, three years old. I mean, he's a tough guy. Oh, that one, okay. You know, and, no, I said there's something else in there. I was something else in there. <laughs> I don't see it. And uh, so um, from that, we just, God really just started speaking to us. And we, we, uh, we today have 11 children. What? And uh, <laughs> 11 children. We did, that was just getting started. <laughs> we're still, we're still, we're still hoping for the number 12. It's been, it's been 13 years, so we're, we're probably not going to get there. <laughs> Uh, but uh, 18 grandchildren. we have 18 grandchildren now. That's amazing. Uh, so, and the the the, the big thing, what, what what God did in all that, um, just to, just to, I know you heard. Well, I thought we were going to talk about Israel, and I'm I'm, I'm talking about Israel. Here, this is the, uh, the the word how God got us in this place. I my all of my friends um, thought, what what's going on? You know what's going on, with Tommy? What what is happening to him? We the story really gets really crazy. Um, I I'm sitting at FedEx and I'm feeling like I need to leave. I need to leave the company. I put in a one month. Don't ever do this. Don't put a one month you know resignation letter in because you're what do you do for a month after you put in? A you know you're like. He's, you know, you're nothing. You're just sitting, you're just doing, you're just sitting in this place and you're trying to help, trying to get engaged. You're not. So, I, I had this really strong urge. Now, I, I'm from Franklin, you know, I'm from here. I had this strong urge to live off the land. I wanted to live off the grid. I, I, I subscribe to, to uh, uh, these crazy uh, uh, homesteading magazines for, for years. And I would read these things, and I would like, this is what I want to do. I want to live off the land. I grew up on a farm. I grew up, actually, when I was, it was 11 years old when I moved to Franklin, but I, I, came, I came here from Lebanon where we had a farm on Tater Peeler Road. If you're familiar with Lebanon. What? I grew up on Tater Peeler Road. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. 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 Oh
Oh, it's a guy. I drove a 28 turn. I drove a Well, we had 150 acres on JB Road. Who would have done it? Okay, we all. I was next to JB Jones. JB Jones? He was up on the hill almost down the chicken road. Jeff Chicken Road. Stop. Get off the fucking lane. Off Stumpy Lane, get on the Tempe Peeler Road, and you run into Chicken Road. Yes, we're almost here. I live, you know, the, the, the chambers yeah. that live out there. With that. Yeah. I live right, our farm is right across the street. <laughs> I can't even believe this. Y'all. <laughs> hey, Henry, I'm going to Israel. Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, you're going to Israel. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm just shouting at you. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, Betsy can have an extra five minutes. <laughs> so, Whoa. I. I um, <laughs> we, I, I, I live there, and God is speaking to us about, uh, you know, what do we do? Where, where, where do we go from here? You know, I, I, I jumped off the cliff, and I'm, I'm going somewhere. You know, I don't know where I, I, I end up. Uh, we, we had this farm. We had, we were homeschooling our children, um, really trying to walk where God wanted us to walk, and we ended up moving. And, and I know some people are listen to my story and they say, oh, God, if I have to do that. <laughs> you know, if that really, is this what it means when you give yourself, then you're going to take me to some. So Sherry and I ended up in, a, in the middle of selling everything we had and moving into the middle of an Amish community. We, saw, we, we lived off the grid for almost seven years. Wow. And we were, um, we had no debt. We grew our own vegetables. We lived... Uh, awfully. I went radically into a different place. I thought this is where I was supposed to be. And um, I had someone, I still had friends, I'd say I still had friends in the real world. And um, in the real world, and they invited me to go to Israel. I had been studying for a while. We've been studying the feast. We've been studying uh, things about Israel. Uh, I did, you know, a uh, Passover Seder. I, you know, in a homeschool group that found the Seder, we were doing it, uh, and, we, and we were, we, something was there. I didn't know what it was, but something was there. Mm-hmm. This friend of mine invited me to Israel, and, uh, and long story short, it, it was going on business. I was obviously this, basically, I, I looked like an Amish farmer, and, and my wife looked like an Amish wife of a farmer. Mm-hmm. And my children looked like children that were farming, little urchins with no shoes and, and you know, with having the time of their clothes lives. and having the time of their lives and farming with horses and doing all this other stuff. And, and uh, we were, the, the real radical part of this is that I actually grew vegetables and grew organic vegetables and I brought them back to Franklin, Tennessee and sold them in Leapers Fork out in, um, out, out in Leapers Fork at Puckett's where my friend Andy owned the store. Wow. And, which was hard. It was hard, you know. I was the, you know, the, the uh, Mr. Football, Mr. Most Athletic at Franklin High School. Mr. Franklin High School. I was the, the person, you know, that, and now I've got an Amish hat with broad falls and some oh, tomatoes in it. Wow, that. that's bizarre. And people, people <laughs> And, and people would come by, and, and my friends would, would drive by first, and they would just look, you know, look, watching. Tommy's having a religious experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, was had, I was in this, Tommy must have, he had, of course, I was just a talk, and, because everybody knew. I was friends with a lot of people here. And, uh, but I had one friend, Andy Marshall, he's, he owns Puckett's Grocery. He said, he said, Tommy, you got to be who you are. you got to be, he was a good friend. And he, he just said, you got to. Serve God with everything you have, and whatever He's called you to do, do it. And um, so we did, and it was the best, some of the best years of my life at the time. I went to Israel. I went up to uh, this. I met a guy there who was. Uh, we, we, were, uh, we were we were looking. I was with some guys doing business there. They just wanted me to come along and just kind of be there. Um, this guy said. Hey, I know a farmer who lives in Har Bracha. Har Bracha is Har's mountain. Uh, Bracha is blessing. And it was the Mount of Blessing. If you remember in the Bible, there was the, the Mount of Blessing, the Mount of Cursing. It was the Mount, it was the place where 
uh, in the New Testament is where the woman stood at the well. He said, oh, we, we worship, the Samaritan woman, we worship God on this mountain. You worship in Jerusalem, we worship on this mountain. This is the place. It's the place where Abraham came from his father's house in, Gen in, uh, in, in Genesis 12. And God spoke to them. This area right here in, in the biblical Shechem, or Shem, they say in, in Hebrew. And it was a place that, that God said, this is the land I'm going to give your descendants. The physical reality of a promise. We, we are living the, in this place now after meeting this farmer. Um, my life drastically changed. And he read to me this passage in Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah 31. And it, it's a, a passage of a, it's, it's, it's like Jeremiah's dream. <clears throat> his vision, his dream, that one day this would happen. And it starts out in, in uh, we'll start out in 31 verse 3. It says, The Lord appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you, and again I will build you, and you shall be rebuilt, O virgin Israel, O virgin of Israel. And you shall again be adorned with your tambourines, and you shall go forth in the dances of those who rejoice. And you shall yet plant vines on the mountains of Samaria, and the planters shall plant and eat them as ordinary food. And it goes on to talk about that there will be a watchman that will cry on Mount Ephraim, and, and Arise and let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. And when near the the Jewish, the first religious Jew that I ever met, read this passage to me, I my knees literally began to tremble. I was I was undone. For the first time in my life, I saw the reality of God. Physical, touchable reality of God. The words of the prophets right in front of my eyes. I was, I was stunned. I had sought God. I had done a lot of things to try to get in a, in a place where I could really see God moving. And I was, I was seeing that in my own life. I was seeing God move in, in me and then the radical things that he was doing in our family. And, but I never really understood God in, the, in, the, in, in his reality until I, until I came to Israel. And that was obviously life-changing. I, call, I called Sherry. I, I said, something's happened here. I'm done. We're... The Beverly Hillbillies are about to move to Israel, <laughs> and we're we're gonna we're gonna do something here. And uh, so I came back, and we sold our farm, and we we, we left, and we we just dove. Wow. In. Twelve years ago, we started helping. I asked the, I asked him at that moment when he read this. I said, "What can I do to be a part of this? I'm not Jewish. I don't think I'm Jewish. I don't know." I'm just not, I don't know, but I know that I'm supposed to be a part of this. I know I'm supposed to, I want to be. <clears throat> and so, 12 years ago, our family started going to Israel. We started helping in the vineyards, and we, a year later, we, we started a, a, a 501c3 nonprofit organization uh, just to bring volunteers into Judea and Samaria. Now, Judea and Samaria is a, it's, it's a tough thing. And, and, and here's, the, here's the, the issue that we have, and all of us have in this room. It's not just me. It's, it's not just, I'm not just speaking to you. I'm speaking to me personally as well. We're all victims of replacement theology. We're all victims because we, we, we don't see, and the reason why we don't connect fully, and, and this is on some level. I'm not saying this is for across the board, and don't be offended if, it's, if, if I'm not speaking directly to you, but... But the Jews don't understand our disconnect with Israel. They don't understand our, our disconnect with Jerusalem. They don't understand why it's not something we talk about incessantly. They don't understand why it's just a, it's just a topic every so often. 
maybe once a month or once a year or whatever. And I and I understood that for the first time we, as I'm dialoguing over the years with these with these Jewish people. And we're not talking about secular Jews. We're talking about religious Zionists, the most religious Zionist Jews in all of Israel. These are the settlers. And to bring this home to you, most of you obviously in this room understood the, the UN resolutions and all the things that have happened over the last few weeks and months. And UN 2334, this directing, the, 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 the target of, the, of these UN resolutions, the target of the, when these, these terms like the BDS and all these other things are specifically to, towards Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. And the place that I'm standing is in Samaria. That's the place. In the heart of that, of, that, of that land. And why is it such a target? Why is it that, that it is so much the, the, the enemy's thing? We have to do away with this part of Israel. We're not, you're not hearing about Haifa. You're not hearing about, about Tel Aviv. You're not hearing about these, these other cities. You're hearing about the West Bank. You're hearing about the occupied land. You're hearing about the disputed territories. You're hearing about Judea and Samaria. You're hearing about the West Bank, East Jerusalem. And, and the reason is, is because this is the place where the patriarchs walked. These are the places where the promises were given. When Jacob laid his head on a rock, and God said, this is the land that I'm going to give your descendants. And we have to say, as a Christian, we have to say, is this, was this a, a suggestion? Was it a promise? And has it happened? And the reality is it hasn't happened. And the question is, I think, for me, and what I, was, what I woke up to at that, at that moment, and thank God that I, I was prepared to say, you know what? I can be here. I can, I can drop everything I'm doing right now. I'm not, I have no ties to the world. I have no ties to, to, to debt. I have no ties to anything except... God, if you show me that I need to be here, I'll be here. Mm. And I could do it. Mm. And I, I'm, I'm thankful that God put me in a position. I'm also thankful that in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, an amazing way that I worked, I lived in the midst of an Amish community. The, the similarities between an Amish community and a religious Jewish community is unbelievable. Mm. The training that, that I had to work with a, not a rabbi, but a bishop, but, you know, you, you really can't, if you know anything about the Amish community, you know that there's these similarities, these, these, these very legalistic things that, that they have. And I don't, I'm not saying that as a, as a term of, uh, of dislike to this, towards this community. I love these guys. These are, the, the Amish people were a blessing to me and a blessing to my family. But the Jews are also a blessing to me. And what I learned from just being with them, I learned a lot about who my Savior is. I learned a lot about who my Messiah is. And the amazing thing is that they are also learning who my Messiah is. Because for the first time in 2,000 years, we're dialoguing with the religious community. And they're seeing Yeshua not as this blue-eyed European, you know, Messiah, but as a, as, a, as a good Jew. Because the first thing they have to do is understand Yeshua as a good Jew. Mm. A good, faithful Jew. Mm. And that's who he is. It was, it was a, um, it's been an amazing journey. And I, I know I'm, I'm cutting things off here, but but the the, the path that has happened, and, and as we moved in this this direction, and fast forwarding to today, fast forward today, we have we've had literally thousands of volunteers come now on the mountains of Israel, in across the Green Line. Most people are afraid to cross these these lines. Taylor's here have been many times uh, to Israel with us. And people come from over 20 countries now uh, that are joining us, harvesting, planting, pruning. Right now, right as we are here right now, 
our guys are over there about to get up in the morning to go cut vines and prune the vineyards in Samaria, these, these vines. Um, since we started, since my first, since I, I was first preached to by this religious Jew, the vineyards have increased over 800% in, in Judea and Samaria. The, the, the dreams of the prophets are really actually coming. The, and it's not just Jeremiah, because Isaiah spoke about it. Joel spoke about the sweet wine that's dripping uh, on the mountains of Israel. Ezekiel talks about it in, the, in Ezekiel 36, saying that these, these vines are going to start appearing when my children come home. Because you see, when the, when the Jews return to the land, the land responds. Mm -hmm. The land responds. It's mm -hmm. the blessing of Jacob. Mm -hmm. And the, and, the, and the thing is that, that I want to just share with you guys tonight, it's not a, just a Jewish thing. It is, yes. It's been kept in their DNA. It's been for, for thousands of years, more than 2,000, 3,000, almost 4,000 years, been kept in their DNA to do this work. But the God says that, that Jerusalem, and in Jerusalem, this, this place is going to be a place that draws all the nations. Isaiah is the prophet that says that this is going to be the, the place, the house of prayer for all nations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, we disconnect with that, and even just to say that, the, that God is going to, what did the angel say to Mary, you know, in Luke chapter 1, that one in you is going to sit on the throne of David. Going to sit on the throne of David. The Jews are praying that prayer every day, three times a day. That the one who sits on the throne of David would come. So I say to some of my Jews, I say, I wish my Christian friends were as messianic as you guys. <laughs> so, we got to get this thing. Wow. We've been disconnected from the reality. God is moving right now in the land of Israel. And most of us are just sleeping yeah. right through it. Yeah. But you guys, are, you guys are making an effort. You're making a, 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 an effort. You know, I, I appreciate the heavens, you know, just for their their zeal and their continued and faithful, persistent, crying out and praying for these things. And, and, I, and I know we've been the topic of a lot of their prayers as well. But it's time to get more people. It's time for the nations to respond. It's time for, the, for people to get involved. And it's time, and I'm not sitting here, I'm not trying to recruit people for, for my organization. I'm saying, and some of you, I've heard the stories and some of the sad stories. They, you know, people coming there, and it's almost like, well, God shut the door or whatever. But I think He's He's testing us right now. What is our, how how much are we willing to give here? How much are we willing to to say, you know what? I see what your hand, I see what you're doing. I see what the prophets are saying here, and I see what you're what you're trying to accomplish. And I want to be a part of that. Here am I, send me. So, there's an interesting thing that's happening right now. As Betsy said, uh, our, you know, 13, almost 13 years ago, we came up with this name, Ayovel. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, I had no idea. I was so, I was very clueless. I just said, I like the thing named Jubilee. What is that in Hebrew? And that's basically how wow. it was. That was it. <laughs> Um, I had I didn't understand, uh, but this year, the fight, the fight against Jerusalem, and the fight against Judea and Samaria. You remember what Yeshua said? What was his last word before he ascended in Acts chapter one? Yeah. He said, "You should be my witnesses where Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria." Was it two thousand years ago that he saw there would be a battle? Why not say? You should be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Israel. Why? Why? Why Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria? It's an odd, odd thing to say. But the 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 very focus of fourteen countries, fifteen UN Security Council countries in the U.S. was part of this to come against Jerusalem. Judea and Samaria, because there, there was no, you have to understand, there was no West Jerusalem when Yeshua was here. No West Jerusalem, only East Jerusalem, only the old city. And for the UN to say, this is not Jewish, this is not 
doesn't belong to Israel. None of these, every community, every vineyard, every agricultural entity, everything that's part of these areas are, are, do, do not belong there and they need to be eradicated and brought completely out. All of our, everything that we have done there, that the UN Council says, that must be destroyed. Mm. We have a fight. Mm. This, is, this is a biblical battle. This is the, if you're familiar with the Maccabees and the, and the, and the fight of the, the Jewish people throughout history, this is a battle that we have to take on because Yeshua says about this place, this temple mount, this, this area, even then Yeshua was turning tables not because the temple was okay, and he wasn't turning tables because he hated Jews. He turned the tables because there, were, there was corruption. There was something wrong with the place. And so he's saying, this is my father's house. This is the house of prayer for all nations. We have not seen that yet. And we have to, we have to what the Jews are waiting for us to do is to follow our rabbi. <coughs> the Jews are waiting for us to follow our rabbi. He's waiting for us, and we have to look for, at our rabbi as somebody that we ne- we got to follow. He was, John chapter 2 says that he was obsessed with this place. Why was he turning the, the Jews? Oh, we remembered, says in John chapter 2. We remembered that the zeal for his house had eaten him up. The zeal for his house. Hmm. The question is, when is, the, when is his followers going to have a zeal for his house? And because of replacement theology, we think we can just put up a building somewhere in Tulsa or Nashville or wherever, Brentwood, and call it the house of God. And I, and I know that that's, that may be some confusion here because we're still connected somehow to this replacement understanding. We've got to get away from it. The thing that's bringing the body of Messiah together is one place. Yeshua said, if I be lifted up, I'm going to draw people. That all of the prophets believe that Jerusalem was the place where all the nations would be gathered. That all of the body would be gathered together. Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing to see the body together? Not building its individual temples all over the world, but building together. We, 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 we come together, we worship God in this collective place because it's our collectivity. It's, our, it's this place of us unifying together to worship God in Jerusalem that brings the very presence of God to Jerusalem. The smoke filled the temple in Solomon's, in, in the, in, in the Solomon's temple because they were all there. All of the tribes were gathered together in Jerusalem and they were so loud that the, that the, that the, the, the ground shook. And I know that that, that may be, for some, it may be a foreign language. But God's doing something. God's doing something in Jerusalem. He's doing something in the land of Israel. It's bringing us together. It's connecting us again with the Jewish people. Without agenda, it's bringing us together. And my my effort, I, I didn't understand it. I thought I just wanted to be a part of the prophecies. But what's happened, what's happened is that I fell in love with the Jewish people. I fell in love with the God of Israel. I fell in love with their God. Just like the prophet said, that we would attach ourselves. We would say, your God reigns, Isaiah. We would be, our beautiful feet would go to the mountains of Israel and we would declare one thing, your God reigns. And we would say it in the face of all the nations who stood against her. Your God reigns. And this is an exciting time. <clears throat> this is a, a huge moment in history. I, I just want to appeal to you guys that your life, there, there's something. For me, to be stuck in a corporate job is, a, is almost like telling me I'm going to suffer in hell the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> What God has done for me now in, in stepping out and doing the things. Last week I said, I am, I am harvesting grapes. I sat with the, with the ambassador to Israel, 
the, the last week I'm sitting, I'm having a discussion with the ambassador to Israel. I gave her a bottle of wine, some the same wine I gave you. Oh, I wasn't supposed to tell her that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm sitting there having these conversations. Why does Israel, because Israel's never seen, rarely ever seen, Christianity presenting itself in a place of servitude. Mm -hmm. Yeshua said, I came to serve and not to be served. And for the first time, and I didn't understand this, no idea what I was doing. Can't take any credit, not this much. But the, the 500 volunteers, the, the hundreds of volunteers that are going to be there this year, and that have come last year and the year before and the year before that, that all come to there, the Jews are looking at going, where, what is this? What is this? We've never seen this from Christianity before. They come here talking. We've never seen them do anything to help, anything to serve, anything to, to, to empower us, to, to strengthen us, to give us courage, to give us, to stand with us. And it's something different. And it's getting attention and it's, it's changing the narrative of what's happening in the land of Israel. I, I want to show you that we're, we're working on a project right now, but I think it's so important. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm in way over my head. I don't really, not, and I'm not talking financially, I'm just over my head because what I believe with all my heart that we have to stand with the, as the body of those who follow our rabbi, our Messiah, we have to stand, because in 1967, you guys were not around in 1967. You were, but there a few of us that were around in 1967. It was a miracle, and I know Betsy's talked about this before. But in 1967, there was a huge miracle. And the UN resolution spoke several times saying that the borders before June 4th, 1967, would be, the, the, the Jews would have to be would have to come out of that territory. So what are they saying? The UN is saying, whatever happened in June 4th, 1967, whatever happened in that six-day miracle, it's got to be undone. It has to be undone. We're saying, the leadership of the world is saying to God, whatever you did then, we're going to undo it. Your calendar. And by the way, tonight, if you look outside, there's a full moon. Anybody notice that? Today is two bish uh, spot which is the, the year in the Jewish holiday of the planting of trees. This is the, and, and, it, it, and I know this is a very hard thing, but there's four Jewish New Years in the, in the, in the Hebrew calendar. And we're not going to get into that. No. We're not going to get into the Hebrew calendar. But tonight, but tonight there's a full moon, and tomorrow all of Israel will be celebrating and drinking four glasses of wine. I love you guys already because I know you appreciate wine. So tomorrow night, they're going to drink four glasses. The first one is white. The sec this is your Savior. The first one's white. The second one is white and red. The third one is red and white. And the fourth one is red. And it has to be four full glasses of wine. You have to drink that. This is the celebration of the, of the year of, of the two bitch five. And you can look it up, you Google it, you know, you'll find out. You'll get a Seder, too. It's, a, it's an amazing time to celebrate the restoration of the agriculture in Israel. Tomorrow at our, at our base in, in, uh, in Missouri, we'll be doing a Seder. Our, our base in, in Israel, they're going to be doing a Seder in Israel. And uh, they're going to be celebrating this, this restoration of the land. And uh, so uh, it's an amazing thing. May 24th is the, in the Hebrew calendar. That, the, everybody knows the Hebrew calendar is different from the, the Gregorian calendar. The Roman calendar is different. And this year, the, the Six-Day War, according to the Hebrew calendar, would have been, and the liberation of Jerusalem would have been May 24th. What we're trying to do, our campaign, is to get the church to celebrate, to get the church the weekend before to celebrate with Israel and have Israel events eat falafels, do, do something. Um, it's a jubilant. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the 50th year. It's the 50th year. Thanks, Vince. It's the 50th year since 1967. Wow. The 50th year, the jubilee year since 1967. Now, we, we see the heat. Everybody in here. You, you see the heat that the nations are putting on Israel. Israel's a tiny place. 
There's no justification. Syria is just a stone's throw from where I live in Israel. And yet, there's a massive genocide going on there. And nobody, no resolution is being given to these people. 20, 22 resolutions against Israel this year. 22, four with all of the other countries combined. Resolutions in one year. 22 against Israel, four against all the other nations combined. Including Syria, Somalia, you na name them. Iran, Iran, North Korea, North Korea, all of those combined, and, no, and, and, and Israel is the focus. You tell me if God exists or not. This is a battle against God. This mm -hmm. is a battle against His Word, yeah. and there's no other reason for this. Mm -hmm. And so we are called. Whether you understand what I, a little bit of what I'm saying or a lot of what I'm saying, we're called to be a part and to engage in this. This this does a lot of things for me. And my relationship with the Jewish people, it changes the dynamics of how people see our Messiah. It changes because the things that the Jewish people don't understand and they don't get is our, is our, uh, is our uh, disconnect from Jerusalem. And I started this out by saying that. They don't understand it. We carry a Bible out that talks about Israel and Sessile, even the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And we have to stand in this place. We have to stand to be a testimony of our of who Yeshua is, his the reality of who it is. We have to shake off the anti-Israel sentiment within Christianity, the anti-Israel, the anti-Israel, the anti-Jewish, the anti-synagogue, uh, anti everything that's uh, anti-Judaism. And I know that's a big thing because everything, whenever we talk about the Jewish people and Judaism and all this, we talk about the synagogue of Satan and all this other thing. Drop it. Start loving people. Loving people. Loving the Jewish people. We, 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 have, no, we have not given ourselves a place to go, in, go into the Jewish community and say, you know what, this is what you need to do. This is, we, we need to just go face down in front of those guys. Prostrate. And that's what we're doing. Just prostrate in front of these guys. We're going to change this relationship. No. It's important. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm here. I want to get you guys, mm -hmm. I want to bring you guys in. Something big happening. It's happening across the green line. We tell people we never cross the green line. Tell them it's too dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just not, we just can't go there. It's a beautiful place. God's doing some amazing things. Can we, can we pull that thing up? Tommy, um, while you're getting that ready, when I first um, heard about you, maybe a year ago or two years ago, three years ago, anyway, I, I pulled up, uh, Googled, and saw this um, this film that you guys had done at the vineyard. You know, and it's in the West Bank, it's in the mountains of Israel, and the man had a beautiful facility and vineyard, but he was failing, I believe, because of the boycott and everything in the West Bank. And you guys, the film shows the, um, all of you all, the family plus all the volunteers that are there, and it's like, it, it's like, um, it's sunset, they finished working all day, and they're dancing, and they're singing, and they're oh. worshiping. Yeah, you guys got come worship with them. These guys, all the Christians are, they're out there just it's it's unbelievable. It's like a movie, and uh, but it's real. And I could I would watch the owner of the vineyard, and he was like tears. He was like beside himself, you know. And they're seeing the joy of <coughs> believers, and the worship of believers, and they're seeing them dig in the dirt and pick their grapes for free all day, and cause them to prosper, majorly prosper. Majorly prosper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I just want to give you kind of a picture. Yeah. Is this stuff on TV screens? Yeah. Can we? Can we? Can we? Do I think we were trying to pull it up on the. Are you going to show that? Yeah. Oh. No, no, not that one. Not that one. No. So, so, so I to show. show it. Yeah. So at last year, the leadership uh, dinner, they showed this video that we that we put together, and uh, that we made. And uh, here's the 